Oi, oi. Hi everyone, I'm Will from Wheels Electrical Services, also known as the Midfield General. In tonight's episode, I just want to take you back to a job that we've done this year, where we, um, we've done an electrical installation condition report of a unit where they've literally just occupied it and what they're using it for is storage. It's next to their own warehouse anyway, so they're literally using it as storage. The welfare facilities in the corner are not being used. I think they're actually being locked off so no one can use them. And what they asked us to do is, after the condition report, we found there was loads of problems with the main warehouse lighting. There was, it was a bit of cannibalized of loads of other different systems. Basically what the original one was, it was PVC white conduit going all the way through and where the thermal effect of the heat from being so far, far up has buckled all the conduit and all that. And plus, and all where it was an MOT centre before, loads of cars have hit it, there's thermal, there's scorch marks and all that. And I actually got a call from the customer asking, Will, can you, re can you alter a few of the lights and all that? And I said, look, mate, it, to be honest, it's beyond repair. I don't want to get involved unless it's a, a redoing it. And he said, yeah, that's fine. In their own warehouse, they, they have actually got a similar one. I don't think they've got the Collingwood high bay UFOs like we've put on this job. But we've, what we thought, we'd, we'd do eight Collingwood UFO light fittings via FP200 and using click plugs as standard because that's what we use in maintenance. And I'll show you, when I bring you in, I'll show you what I mean by that. And what we've done was, is we've done two rows of cable tray. We strategically placed them right next to the girders. So the fault lift, if anything, the fault lift would be protected by the girder because it either hit the roof or the girder before it could actually get to the tray. There is a possibility it could hit the tray, but to be honest, it's going to go through the roof before it hits that. So that wasn't a concern. And the actual customer, because it's obviously got to suit a, a pallet, pallet racking system, he actually, I asked him if he could give us the two lines of where he wants the two rows. There is one at the front that's slightly different, but that's because of the welfare facilities. What we actually done was we run two, two feeds from the distribution board straight up across the purlin, back onto the tray, and then over to the front door. What there was is that I put an adaptable box at the top which had dim rail connectors in it, and that was for, and then I run a 20 mil galve conduit down to a two gang light switch. What I thought was is the rather have a more than one circuit, so if there is ever a power cut on one of the phases coming into the building, at least they've got some light, then rather lose all. It was only, they're only 150 watts um, by LED light fitting, so they're not gonna draw any power. So what I done was, is I went onto my mega app, I typed it in there. It's a bit of a weird one really, because I'll show you it on the screen. It's just that for some reason, when you put the FP in there and you look for the cable references, reference uh, reference member E for who's in on cable tray or in thin air, doesn't come up, but the reference member C, C seems to come up twice, so I took it as the second one, even though I'm just showing this as a demonstration. I know that six, you know, is gonna be fine. And because I had two, because it said the length of the run, I had 200 meters of FP200, so I just put 100 down, and that's what I put, that's how I come to that conclusion. I know it was never gonna be 100 meters, because I've got two drums, I've got two drums with a quarter of the run on each one. And so that's how I come about that. So what we done was, is we went into the adaptable box, come back out of that, and then we daisy chained off each light fitting. And what we actually done was, is that we come in and out of these U-boxes. With these U-boxes, we, we uh, have got two six mil drill, drill holes that we actually fit to the purlin, which, and, and then we come in and out. Because the way the cabling was, it was coming, both coming from that way. And then we had like P-clips with inside there. It's absolutely beautiful. It's vital that you put two, um, two fixing holes and resistance at the end, as well as your earth loop impedance, you know, because you can test it without it without going into any of the live connections. Obviously, I've made this myself, so you obviously you've got to check the connections every time you use it or test it. Easily done with your MFT tester. And that's how I do it. And then, obviously, we had me and, Ol uh, me and Ebsy on the floor making up the light fittings, we put the plugs, because I always buy, uh, no, I didn't on this this account, because the Collingwood lights are all sealed units, they come with a free core, they come with a free core flex, so literally all we done was take the plugs 
um, so I can fix it on there. Yeah, so the way we fitted them, like hung the actual light fittings was, is that we use these hook plates, we self tap them, we self tap them to the purlin, they go on like that, and then you just open these up. What I actually done was with these ones is I doubled them up so there was two, just in case there's any breaks. There is actually a hook supplied on the light fitting, so that goes like that. And then what I done was is see these bits here is I crushed it, so it, it, there is a chance it could fall off, but it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? I've been doing it this way for years, and it's never going to happen, even if I fault lift. Anything's possible with that, but obviously the cable will hold it. Plus, I always tie wrap it as well. Um, with the cables going up, I literally metal, the whole job, this all metal tie wraps because I was just a little bit concerned of obviously, you've got to allow for the uh, prevention of premature collapse in the event of a fire. So obviously every single fitting on this particular job was metal fire rated anyway. So that, yeah, that's basically how we do it. And that's kind of, uh, kind of a method we use quite a bit really. As I say, I usually use SWA, but because the guy needed it doing double quick, I thought that'd be a good idea. And it, it turned out really nice. They're really happy with it. I did actually, I was actually concerned that there was no emergency lights and I asked him and he said, look, the company have actually got quite a few properties and they've actually got a, a contract with fire alarm companies. So well, I thought it was just a quick little video. I hope you got something out of it. Anything, you know, if you've got any lights or anything, if you've got any comments of how you do things or how you can do it better, as I say, I do do it other ways and later on in the future, I probably will show you how I do it with SWAs and all that. And uh, the guy was really happy, it turned out really neat and it was mint and it, we managed to get it done and I think it was about 12 hour shift. So where I actually gave it to the lads on price as well as me doing it, we actually managed to get both, get a weekend's wage and uh, not have to work the Sunday. And I think it was a heat wave as well. And plus I know it was the week after the uh, winning the Champions League. So I was on cloud nine. Anyway, I hope you all have the most beautiful week. And if you're gonna be anything, be electric up the old blues. Oi, 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 oi.